let me start the seminar. So uh, today we're happy to have uh, uh, Jap Jakub Konski from Warsaw uh, telling us about stable envelopes via both summons and resolutions. Please uh, take it away, uh, Jakub. Thank you very much. Uh, I Everything I will tell today is based on the joint work with Andrzej Weber, my supervisor. <coughs> and maybe let's start with some setting. Uh, we will consider, I will consider only complex algebraic varieties. And by torus, I mean algebraic, complex algebraic torus, which is just, just C star to some power. And I want to talk about characteristic classes in the equivalent K theory. So let me first introduce equivalent K theory and equivalent K theory. So if we have a variety X, then the Standard K theory is a free abelian group generated by algebraic uh, vector bundles over X divided by some relation. Relation is given by short exact sequences. For every such exact sequence, we say that the middle term is in the relation with the sum of the left one and the right one. And we can repeat this definition in the equivariant setting. If we have T variety X, by which I mean variety equipped with an action of a torus, then the equivariant K theory is just free abelian group generated by classes of equivariant vector bundles over X, divided by exactly the same relation given by short exact sequence of equivariant vector bundles. And I want to think about K theory as some sort of cohomology theory. So at least I want to have uh, some functoriality. And for every map of varieties, we have the pullback map from the k theory of target to the k theory of source, uh, exactly as in the case of standard homology. This map is given by standard pullback. The, OK, this is due to the fact that if we have uh, that the pullback is exact. If we have a short exact sequence of vector bundles, then the pullback sequence is also exact. So the relation defining K theory is preserved. Okay. But there is second harder map. This is push forward. If we have a proper map between varieties with the smooth target, then we may define a map from the K theory of the K theory of the source to the K theory of the target. And there we cannot give such simple definition as in the pullback case because there are two, pro two, two problems. First, uh, push forward is not exact. And second, if we push forward the vector bundle, we obtain a coherent shift, not necessary a vector bundle. OK, it's possible to circumvent both of these problems. To go around the first one, we take, may take some alternating sum of derived functors. And to go around the second, we may use the fact that y is smooth and every coherent shift has some finite resolution by vector bundles. So we can define still some element in K theory. But I want to only emphasize that this map is hard. Like it's hard to define because one need to, and hard to compute explicitly because one needs to know this higher derived functors and one needs to know this the resolution. So there are lots of complicated things to you know. But in some cases, this map is really nice. If we have the map which sends the whole projective variety to a point, then the push forward is given just by the Euler characteristic. So one may think of this push forward as some relative version of Euler characteristic. And I want to say that in the equivariant setting, the situation is somehow easier. We can define an element in this abstract ring in the K theory uh, 
by giving some bunch of polynomials. And this push forward will be defined by some combinatorial operations on this polynomial. So I will tell, tell you a little about localization theorem. <clears throat> if we have first, what is the source of polynomials? If we have any representation of a torus, it decomposes as a sum of one dimensional representation. So if torus acts on vector space, uh, linearly, then we have may decompose it into one dimensional representations. One dimensional representation corresponds to characters, which are homomorphisms from torus to C star. Okay. And action on 6ci is okay is given by the following formula theta on 6y t times pow we apply the character ci to element of torus and use complex multiplication with pow okay <clears throat> this allows to uh, have following isomorphism Equivalent k-theory of a point is just Laurent polynomials in rank t variables. Okay, this ti corresponds to uh, some special characters. The, they are just projection to each factor, rank t to c star. And then it's easy to show that any character is Laurent polynomial polyno monomial. In the eyes, and we, if we have any vector space which belongs to this equivariant k theory to a, po of a point, then we may assign to it some of characters xi, which corresponds to irreducible factors. Okay, so equivariant k theory of a point is just Laurent polynomials. So now we want to generalize, have something similar. For a variety. So if we have a fixed point, then the inclusion map is T equivariant. Therefore, we may have pullback map from the K theory of whole variety to the K theory of a fixed point, which is just Laurent polynomial. Okay, this map is given by take the class of vector bundle. And assign to it a class of fiber, which is just representation of the torus. And then do the same as above, decompose it into one dimensional representation. And roughly speaking, uh, localization theorems tells us that if we consider all polynomials corresponding to different fixed points, they determine this class in the equivalent KTR. Uh, more formally, uh, if <coughs> suppose that X is smooth projective T variety and that the fixed point set is finite, then the biawinski birula theorem and localization theorem imply that the equivalent K theory of the X is a subring of a ring of K equivalent K theory of fixed points, which is just, some number of copies of Laurent polynomial rings. So if we have a class here, then it is de determined by a collection of polynomials describing the fibers. Okay. And these are polynomials. This is really nice from the computational point of view, because if we, for example, want to have tensor product here of two classes, then we may just multiply polynomials pointwise and obtain some, which is easy. And moreover, uh, these two maps, pullbacks and push forwards, can be computed on the level of polynomials, uh, okay, without talking about some global information of vector bundles. So first pullbacks, because this is easier. If we have any map and the class E 
in the equivalent K theory uh, of the target. Okay, then by localization theorem, this is just determined by some bunch of polynomials, one for every fixed point. Okay, and we want to say what is the class of the pullback in the equivalent K theory of X. And okay, this is pretty simple. We the map on the varieties induces the map on the fixed point set, and we just look how this map looks. Okay, these two points go to the first, and we write the polynomials uh, along the arrows. Okay, and this is no hard theorem. This is just in the reality of pullbacks. If you look on how localization theorem works. So the pullback map is actually simple and combinatorial. What is more interesting probably is that push forward can be also computed on this level, uh, but it's more complicated formula. We have something called Lefschetz Riemann Roch, which says that if we have a map between smooth projective varieties and the fixed point sets are isolated, and we have some element in the KTR of X, then we have formula for the push forward. Okay. The push forward okay, in the equivalent K theory of Y is fully determined by the restrictions by localization theorem. So we only need formulas for these polynomials. So we take polynomial, we sum polynomials corresponding to all pre-image, all fixed points which lie in the pre-image of our chosen Y and multiply each of this thing by some correction. Uh, this correction may look scary, but uh, it's nothing hard. It, well, it depends on tangent representations of x to x and y, okay? The tangent space to y at the fixed point y and tangent space to x and the fixed point x are representation of the tori. We decompose them uh, to one dimensional representation and we take such factor one minus one over x for any weight in the two representations. Okay, but what is important in this formula is that it uses only local information, like only some information about representation of a torus, not some global information about vector bundles. So all these things can be really easily, usually can be easily computed. There are, this is just some ad operation on rational functions, nothing more. Okay, and I have a very silly example to show you how this stuff works. I will compute Euler characteristic of P1 in O minus 1. This is, of course, zero. Uh, but I will use this Lefschetz formula, Riemann Rock formula, to do this. So, first, we need some action, torus action, to use Lefschetz Riemann Rock. So, let's see star act on C2 by T times xy equals txy. This induces action on p1 and on o minus 1, because o minus 1 is just some total space of o minus 1 is just some subset of p1 times c2. OK? The fixed point set is just two points, 1, 0, and 0, 1. And I consider the map which sends whole P1 to a point. Okay. Then the, this Euler characteristic in which I'm interested is by definition just push forward of the class of sheep O minus one. And I have written here what the left shed Riemann Rock formula tells us in this case. To compute push forward, we need to fact 
two summons for each point. And the correction is really simple because we have one. This corresponds to the fact that tangent space to point at point is zero dimensional. And here is factor corresponding to tangent space to P1. So I only need to compute these two things. Okay, and this is pretty simple. Okay. O minus one at X, P1 at X. Okay, here we have T because Toros act by T on the first coordinate. Here we have one because Toros don't act on the second coordinate. Here there is one over t, and here there is t. So, Lefschetz Riemann rock tells us that we have first summand for one over one zero. It's t times one one minus t. Okay, this t here is this t here, and this one minus t is one minus uh, one over this thing. And for the second point. We have one times one, one minus one over t. And we may simplify and we obtain t minus t by one minus t, which is zero. Okay, so everything works. And I should probably know that if I change this thing here, then I only need to change this little calculation here to obtain new, revel new results. This probably is not very exciting for P1, but in general, this is like really powerful thing to uh, in computational sense. Okay, so I hope to conclude maybe. Uh, I hope this shows that the equivalent K theory is nice computational tool. And <clears throat> if I have a class some in the equivalent K theory of some variety, then I think it's given in explicit way, like if I, in fact, can determine the polynomials, uh, okay, which are, which define this class, like if I can determine the restrictions to every fixed point, because then I can use all this localization machinery to work with this class, okay? I don't have something abstract. I have some bunch of polynomials. And I want to present some very vague way how to define some such classes uh, for closed subvarieties. Okay. So suppose that we have a closed subvariety of some ambient smooth variety M. And we want to define some characteristic class this in equivalent KQR of M, somehow describing, connected with geometry of X. For example, fundamental class or some deformation of it. So how to do this? One of the ideas is to find a resolution of singularities of X. By resolution of singularities, I mean that Z to X is be rational and proper, and that is smooth. And of course, I assume that fixed point sets of that everything is T equivariant, and the fixed point set of X, M, and Z are finite. Then we may define class in the K theory of Z in some explicit way, right? And for by this, I mean that we know the restriction to the fixed points and push forward it to M. If we know the whole geometry of Z, then this push forward can be computed using left riemann rock formula. And we obtain all the information about this class also. Uh, okay. And many classes are defined in such way. For example, X has rational singularities. Singularities. Then the fundamental class is defined by taking A equal one. 
and other class there are also other classes for example the charge part McPherson class in equivalent k theory motivic churn class in k theory or elliptic class of Boris of Lib and Libbaber in elliptic theory okay and I want to <coughs> use this machinery to some very concrete varieties to Schubert varieties in flag varieties. I probably don't need to say anything about Schubert varieties in this seminar, but just for the sake of completeness, let me uh, read definitions one more. Uh, I assume that G is semi-simple, simply connected algebraic group with a chosen Borel subgroup and maximal torus. Then I consider the generalized flag variety G mod B, which is just this quotient. This is smooth and projective. And if we consider natural action of maximal torus on this variety, then the fixed point set G mod B T is finite. This is in bijection with bind group. Okay. And for every uh, fixed point, I consider Schubert cell, which is of this point, which is just B orbit. And it turns out that this is isomorphic to affine space. And the Schubert variety is the closure of Schubert cell. And this is possibly singular. Possibly. Okay. This may be singular. Okay. And it turns out that Schubert variety have very nice resolution of singularities. Uh, which allow to define a lot of characteristic classes uh, by the procedure given in the previous slide. Okay, but, and maybe this will be the last slide before the break. Uh, if we have, okay, so there is something called both summons and resolution. If we have some fixed point, which is W in G mod B T, then this is in fact a veil group element and we may write it as a word in a simple reflection and for every such decomposition we obtain a resolution of singularities i don't may if i have time i will give you definition later how to construct this thing but i will probably don't have time but i want only to say that this resolution is very nice that the fixed point is T equivariant. The fixed point set is finite. We know that the, okay, it's isomorphic over the uh, Schubert cell. Like if we define the interior of Bot Samuelson as the pre image of Schubert cell, then the, this map is an isomorphism. And we can describe say control boundary like if we define boundary as the exceptional locus then this is like everything other than pre image of schubert cell then this is a t invariant divisor with smooth components and these components intersect nicely okay and i think this is a good point for a break all right